So before we actually get into today's video, I want to talk to you guys about JerseyFIFA.com because, as you can see, they have hooked me up with a load of fresh shirts for this year's World Cup. I've got the England home kit, the England away kit, and also a nice little retro shirt. And you can do exactly the same if you head to JerseyFIFA.com using the link in the description down below. They also do the same for club football as well. The latest home shirts, away shirts, but also some really nice retro kits. If you are interested, head to the link in the description down below and use code JerseyFIFA for a discount when you order. Now into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where today we are back with yet another tactical preview for Manchester United. This time, it's a big one. It's the Manchester derby, of course, against Manchester City. This time at Old Trafford, in the reverse fixture at the Etihad, Manchester City, of course, won 6-3. And tactically and kind of performance-wise, demolished Manchester United. United weren't really even competitive in that game, and it was far too easy for City. So today we have quite a challenge on our hands. We need to look at how that can change this time around. How Manchester United can beat Manchester City. Now, unfortunately, for me and for you guys as viewers, but also for Manchester United and Ten Hag, Manchester City are very, very good. Which means that for me to sit here and really give you the perfect blueprint of how to beat Manchester City would take hours and hours and hours and hours. And I'm not Eric Ten Hag, I'm not Pep Guardiola, I can't really give that to you. So instead what I want to focus on is a few key points. Uh, kind of a few key points on Manchester City and then a key point on how Manchester United can hurt them. So I want to break down City into three things that they are very, very good at and then one thing that they are not so good at. So when I look at Manchester City, one of the things I see is that, firstly, they are very good at getting out of the press. Uh, when teams put pressure on them, Manchester City are very good at working the ball through that and then playing forward. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, Manchester City are also very good at creating midfield overloads in the centre of the pitch. So I want to address how United can kind of deal with that. And finally, Manchester City are very good at making the pitch as big as possible and progressing the ball out wide. Something that teams don't really seem to focus on when they play against Manchester City. I think it's a big issue that needs to be focused on. So again, we're going to focus on that. And then point four, Manchester City aren't very good at dealing with transitions from attack to defence. So we are going to look at that as a way that United can get some success. So that's the way this video is going to work. We're going to split it into those four different sections. So let's just get started. So section one, Manchester City are very good at getting out of the press. How do you deal with that? You don't press them. Kind of makes sense, right? They are that good at getting out of the press that your press has to be so, so perfect to stop them. I don't think Manchester United are at the point in their kind of journey under Ten Hag where they can really press this Manchester City team and hurt them. In terms of United's typical pressing shape, they tend to move the wingers between the fullback and the centre-back and look to press in that way. The problem is Manchester City have Edison, who, if Martial is going to split the centre-backs, Edison will then take responsibility to have more touches on the ball from where he is ridiculously good and can flick passes out towards the fullback and almost take out Manchester United's press. This is the way that United press. If they do that in this game, I think they will be taken out of the equation. And then if you allow these City fullbacks to bring the ball forward, with the combining with the midfielder and the winger, they have wide overloads and can 3v2 the likes of Fred and Shaw. Or on the other side, play the board Cancelo, carry it forward. They can outnumber Bruno Fernandes and Dallo on this side of the pitch. So in my opinion, the best strategy for Manchester United for Eric Ten Hag in this game is not to apply a high press and to instead sit in more of a mid block. So if Manchester United aren't going to apply a high press, Manchester City will be able to progress the ball through that first phase quite easily. From where we come on to point two, Manchester City's midfield overloads. Now at the moment, the shape that City very much like is a 3-2-5 with one of the fullbacks playing in the back three, whilst the other one inverts in midfield. Uh, the fullbacks have changed in recent games. However, I am confident Kyle Walker will play it right back to try and deal with Marcus Rashford. And despite his recent form, I do think Cancelo will play on the other side for his ability to invert into the midfield. This will allow the likes of Kevin De Bruyne and Gundogan, although it might be Bernardo Silva, to push forward. And this is where that midfield overload is created. Because we can see that against most systems, including this United system, City have the advantage. Rodri, Cancelo, De Bruyne, Gundogan against Casemiro, Fred and Bruno Fernandes. Four versus three. Now, that's of course a problem for Manchester United, so we need to look at how they can kind of nullify and deal with that. One way is by playing Fred over Eriksen. Eriksen is very important to what United do on the ball, but in terms of off the ball, Fred is better, covers a bit more ground, and not just covers more ground because Eriksen is very hard working, Fred's just a bit more nippy with the way that he does it. He just covers the ground a bit quicker, a bit more mobile, a bit more tenacious. I think United need that in the midfield in this game alongside Casemiro. However, United still are a man down. So the question is, how can they address that? And my solution 
is to bring the wingers in really, really narrow. And this isn't something that any team has really tried to do against City yet this season, for reasons that I will come on to in a minute. However, this is the way that I would be trying to deal with this problem. Because I think now United kind of reduced this threat of City's ridiculous dominance uh, numerically, but also positionally in the midfield. Having these wider players coming inside into the middle of the pitch should stop City really dominating this area and almost make it a bit hectic, make it a bit crowded in the middle of the pitch. City like control, if United can kind of rough that up a little bit, that could be a good approach. Now, of course, that is asking a lot of Rashford and Anthony to defend in this way, but I think it's really, really important in this game. I think it's absolutely crucial. So that is point two addressed. Point one, don't press. That's how you stop Manchester City's ability to get out of the press. Step two, how do you stop City dominating the middle of the pitch? You bring your wingers a little bit narrower. But that brings us very nicely onto point three. The third point I made was that City are very good at stretching the pitch and progressing the ball out wide. And essentially what they do is with these midfielders continue to push forward, they essentially make a front five, which against most teams back four is a big problem. And we saw Chelsea try and do something similar, right? They used a very narrow 4-3-3 to deal uh, with Manchester City's shape, but they were very passive with the way that they played, which meant that City had easy ball progression out to the wingers, with John Stones in particular doing an excellent job of switching passes side to side. So to stop City's easy progression in these wide areas, you have to do two things. You have to stop John Stones getting too much of the ball, but you also have to stop the ball side centre back, whether it's Laporte or Walker, having too much time on the ball. But whilst doing that, you've got to make sure you maintain numbers in the middle of the pitch to stop those overloads. And now you can see the kind of the size of the task for Ten Hag. However, I do have a solution. And it's not a particularly common tactic that I'm going to be using here. But I think what I would do is firstly ask Martial to kind of stay quite tight to John Stones. That's pretty standard, pretty normal for something to happen like that. However, what I am going to do is ask the ball side winger to really apply an intense press on the centre back on the ball. So when Laporte has the ball in these areas, to stop this easy pass into Phil Foden, Anthony has to be there, curving his run to stop the ball from going to Phil Foden easily, but United need to stop that. With John Stones then blocked as well, it's going to force Manchester City backwards. Now you might say, well now United have lost their dominance in midfield. That is true, but at least United are still 4 versus 4. So when this ball side winger is pressing, it's important that Bruno Fernandes moves across to the near side midfielder, but also that the far winger tucks in onto the inverted midfielder. So now United have this box shape in midfield, and what I've done like this is you still stop that overload in the middle of the pitch, but also you are stopping this easy wide progression. I think it's really key to stopping this Manchester City team. It has to happen on both sides of the pitch. So if City then recycle backwards and work the ball to Kyle Walker, that is Rashford's cue to then go press, Fernandes to move across, and Anthony to come onto Cancelo. This stops City playing how they want to play. It stops his easy pass down the line. Now, let's be honest, this is Manchester City. They are very good, technically they're very good, and they're good in their kind of isolated situations. They are good with their tight passing. They can work through this. So there will still be situations where the ball gets to Mares and gets to Foden. United almost just have to take the risk of that. Yes, you are allowing City's wingers into wide one versus one situations, but the problem against Manchester City is that they are so good all over the pitch, you can't really stop every problem. I do think that this is probably the way for United to approach it. Try and force City into this way. Where the most they've got really is maybe a hopeful ball out to one of the wingers where United have to back themselves into one versus one. Foden recently hasn't looked like he really wants to go down the line. If Grealish plays, he can sometimes be a bit passive coming backwards. Riyad Mahrez, I think, is a player that Luke Shaw can deal with. So this is how I would approach the game. So what we have done is covered three of City's main strengths. We have stopped them playing out the press by sitting deeper. We have stopped them progressing through the centre of the pitch by bringing our wingers narrower. And we have stopped them progressing the ball out wide by asking our ball side winger to press alongside Martial whilst the other winger tucks into the midfield. Like I said, we can't cover everything with City because they are so good. But what this will do is stop the likes of Haaland, De Bruyne, Gundogan getting on the ball as much in dangerous areas. And if United can do that, then they have a chance. Time for point four. Now, the first three points were all about stopping Manchester City. Point four is about playing to Manchester United's strengths, but also, again, City's weaknesses. Now, what was this all about? Transitions. If City are playing in this way and Manchester United are able to defend in this way, and actually something I should add is this is how I would approach the game. This isn't a match prediction. This is how tactically I would be doing it if I was in Ten Hag's shoes, but I'm not. The call is up to him. However, if the match was to play out like this, with United playing four versus four in the midfield and creating it very hectic and kind of like an intense midfield where the ball is going to be pinging about a bit, 
Manchester United will get situations where they can win the ball and then transition. This is Manchester United's strength this season, but also Manchester City's weakness. In the last seven goals that they've conceded, two of them have come from behind their own right back. Now, this weakness is kind of addressed by the recent return of Kyle Walker. However, Manchester City's recent weakness being Manchester United's recent strength, like both of those coinciding in the same side of the pitch, that is how Manchester United have to play. Martial is to be drawing the likes of Stones and isolating Rashford in this wide area. Can he get at Kyle Walker? I think something else that United could do also is use Martial peeling to the left slightly, drag Stones across that way and maybe open up more space inside for Rashford. I think one versus one against Walker might be difficult, but perhaps if the space opens up inside, he could be more useful. This is where United need to target, the quick transitions. Of course, Anthony is going to be important as well, and I think compared to recent games, he needs to be a bit more progressive with the way that he plays, a bit more on the front foot, a bit more direct even at times. At times in recent weeks, he kind of gets into these situations on the counter-attack and then slows it down. He needs to be direct, get at these Manchester City players. And that's why for me, Manchester United's two wingers are crucial to this game. From a defensive point of view, stopping that easy wide progression, but also the narrow overloads, and then in possession, these counter-attacks. So those, for me, are the four main points that Manchester United need to focus on ahead of this game. And if they set up in this way, I think they can win. Like I said at the start, like I've said throughout, there are so many other things that we could talk about as well, but simply I can't cover it all in one video. There isn't the time to do it. But these are just some of the key points, what I believe are some of the key factors in this game, and some of the key ways that Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag and his players can stop City from playing to their strengths, whilst also making sure to play to Manchester United's strengths. So yeah, that's my view on it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What do you think of this kind of hybrid system that I've come up with, this narrow 4-2-3-1, which almost turns into a 4 triple 2 at times in the press? Let me know what you think of that. Let me know what you think of my starting 11 that I've gone for here. Would you play Ericsson over Fred, perhaps? Let me know all of that in the comments down below. And, of course, as always, a score prediction. But, yeah, that's all I've got time for today. That's all I really want to say. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. And, as always, I will see you in the next one.